Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. All in your homes, all in your houses. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. We're here to celebrate his blood. Hallelujah. Tell somebody in your home, say the blood, the blood. Amen. of me. For as often 
often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord his death until he comes. This is the word of God, and we do believe that it is true. The grass withers and the flowers fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus, for your life. We thank you, oh God, for being good, for being true, for being real. Heavenly Father, we know that there is not a day that we cannot go on in these day, in these times that we are living in without telling you thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen. God, I thank you for never allowing your word to fall to the ground. God, I thank you for always being true to your word. God, I thank you for being a way maker, a promise keeper, and a heart fixer. God, I thank you for revealing yourself to us in this day and in this time like never before. For surely you are a healer. Surely you are a deliverer. Surely you are the one who is able to keep us from falling and present us. Glory to God. Oh, God, I thank you for always being good, for always being alive, for always being active. God, I thank you that your blood has never lost its power, that your blood still speaks. Lord, I thank you for your son Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins. Yes, God. I thank you for allowing him to walk this earth all 33 of those years, Heavenly Father. And I thank you that as he died for us, as he died, he has looked for us and he saw us and he allowed his blood to speak on behalf of us. I thank you now for allowing us to experience your grace. Great is your faithfulness, oh God, for surely we have experienced mercies every single day. And we love you, we honor you, and we bless you. God, we thank you for your son Jesus, the heart fixer. God, we thank you for your son Jesus, the mediator. God, we thank you for your son Jesus, the one who is able to speak for us when we don't know how. God, I thank you for the Holy Ghost for being our intercessor. God, I thank you even now for proving that you are a God who is not taken by surprise. Thank you, Lord, for proving that you are a God that does not allow the enemy to speak for him, but the word, glory to God, has never lost its power. The word still speaks, and we thank you now that the blood still works, and we sing your word. We sing your Suicidal thoughts. Oh we thank you oh now God. that you are the steel, oh the comfort of God. We praise you now like never before. So oh come on in, Lord, in our houses. Come on in, Lord, in our homes. Come on in, Lord, in our hearts. Come on in, Lord, so that we'll be able to feel your presence. So that we'll be able to have the testimony that you met us in our homes. That you met us in our hearts. That you met us and you trust.
God. Hallelujah. Because he lives. Glory to God. Tell somebody, say, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus. Calvary. Thank you to my pastor, Pastor Jones, and on behalf of the Prospect Hill Baptist Church family, I want to say a personal thanks, and I'm sure that everyone will if they have not been doing so already. Thank you for your timeless and inspired leadership in carrying us through this season. 
We love you. We thank God for you. And daily we are praying for you that the spirit of the living God will just surround you and protect you and uphold you that as you lead us forward from one degree to another, I have not seen nor you heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has prepared for them that love him. So I just want to say a personal thanks to, to Pastor Jones. Thank you for this opportunity tonight. If you have your Bibles, I won't try to be with you long. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want to begin reading at verse 23 down through 25. When you're there, say amen. I can hear you in my head. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 25. These words are recorded. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, yeah. took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I want to talk about just for a little while today, remember. Yeah. Remember. Yeah. Remember. And let me just let me just stick a pin right there and just say to you, uh, I want you to also remember this coronavirus because it won't be around always. Amen. God is in control. But remember. Brothers and sisters, memory is a very important aspect in all of our lives. It deals with the actions of the mind that has us to recall or to look back on times that we have experienced, times that are now behind us. But it has us to see those times and many times as we look back the times that we have experienced are not so good. Sometimes memories can plague us and bring us sorrow and pain. The hurts that affect us in many of our lives today are etched in our minds. And somehow or another, we just can't seem to shake those memories. But then we have those other memories. The memories that bring smiles to our faces, happy times, joyful times that surround them, times when we remember those days of happiness when it was at its peak, those days, even we call them now the good old days. Stevie Wonder got into the fray when he recorded a song saying, looking back on when I was a little nappy-headed boy. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Well, Stevie has still nappy, but the memories are good. You remember those days, back in the days of platform shoes, uh, bell-bottom pants, the curl, the processed hair, the halter tops, uh, the hip hugger pants. Those days that happiness seemed to just flourish and it seemed that the sun was shining all the time. The good old days. Days of the Afro picks that were both metal and plastic. 
the days that could make you laugh and even laugh so hard, it even made you cry. Those days. And it's good to remember those days. But here, here in the lesson tonight, Paul calls this church at Corinth to remember. He says, take a look back to the days when you first came to know Jesus. Take a look back when he became the Lord and Savior in your life. Take a look back. He calls them to remember the church now at Corinth, even though the church was in a mess. He says to the members of the church, you got to remember. Yeah. You remember that from your studies in Corinth that, 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 that Corinth had problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were stooped in idol worship, yeah. sexual immorality, yeah. the gambling, the sexual perversions, the homosexuality, the, lesbian, the lesbianism. They had renewed their connection with the temple of Aphrodite. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing was is that, that these were people who had been born again, but yet had been influenced by the customs or the things they used to do. Could have caused to memory some things that we used to do. We're not so far from, my brothers and sisters, the times in our lives when we did some dastardly things. Yeah. We're not so far from the times in our life that we said some ugly words. As a matter of fact, wake me up on the wrong side of the bed in the morning and you might get something said to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Rub me the wrong way. And I just might resort back to where I used to be. But look at what Paul says to the church at Corinth. He said, he said, you need to lay aside the things of your past and reacquaint yourself with what you have done. You have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life. Now you ought to walk like it, talk like it. You ought to look like it. Yeah. Yeah. But these people had a problem. It's awesome. Because they were influenced by society. The society at Corinth was so influential that even though when they went to church to try to worship the Lord, there was somebody in the church participating in idol worship and they were doing this right in the house. Yes. Go. Mine, United, United Negro College Fund says, is a terrible thing to waste. They forgot who they were and where they were, and they started casting all of their worship, casting their precious salvation aside. And Paul says, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Mm -hmm. I want you to remember. Mm -hmm. Yes. The word remember means to recall, to recollect, to remind, to reaccount, and even to reminisce. Mm -hmm. yes, awesome. Let your mind roll back. There was a time in your life, my brothers and sisters, when you came to know who Jesus was and they couldn't set you down in church. Yeah. There was a time when you came to know who Jesus was and you wanted to be involved in everything that went on in the church. Yeah. But for some reason, something happened that the love of God has waxed cold in our hearts and, and we are not on fire for the Lord like we used to be. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We need to remember our first love. Yes, yes, yes. So there's a couple of things I want to throw at you and then I want to get out of your way. First of all, Paul calls them to remember who Christ is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about you, but from what I read in the word that the Lord has not changed. Yes, yes, yes. He is the same yesterday, says Hebrews 13 and 8. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He has never changed. He's not changing. He's incorruptible. He's infallible. infallible. He's incomprehensible. The Lord of everything, he has not changed. Even COVID-19 won't change him. Everyone has to bow before this 
Lord of ours because he's unchanging. He's valuable. And Paul says, remember who he is. So when you remember who he is, I don't care if you go back to the book of Genesis and roll your way all the way to Revelations, you're going to find that Jesus is the same. He does not change. He does not change his mind. He does not change his word. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Yeah. And if he changed it, I don't know about you, but I don't know where I would be. Yeah. I'm glad he has not changed. Because the word that convicted me when I was a child is the same word that hits me every now and then and convicts me when I find myself erring off from the way. It's the same word that brought my mama to Christ. It brought my dad to Christ. It brought my husband, my wife to Christ. It brought my friends to Christ. It brought all of you to Christ. The same word. And Paul says, remember who he is. Yes. Yes, sir. He is the son of the living God. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. He is Alpha. He is Omega. He's the beginning. He's the ending. He's the first. And he is the last. Mm -hmm. And next of all, I want you to remember that he is able. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's able. Even today, he's able. You can check his record and find from birth to crucifixion. Nothing but good deeds and miracles performed in his, in his life. You know, he is able. I looked at the news last night and early this morning, and everybody is talking about the bad news of COVID-19. Yes. Everybody is talking about how many people have got it and how many people have died. But I noticed none of the news media has stopped to tell you how many people has recovered. Yeah. That lets me know that in the spite of COVID-19 going on, God is still able. He's restoring people right now, even as we speak. Some people got released from the hospital today. He's able. Yes, yes, yes. Some people don't have COVID-19 no more. He's able. Yes, yes. Look at you in your own lives as what he's brought you from. You couldn't have did what you did by yourself. God is able. He's able, he's able, he's able, he's able, he's able. And the song says he can do what no other power can do. Yes. I wish I had a church up in here right now because, because the abilities of God are not measured by your thoughts or your perceptions or what you believe. The abilities of God are not held up in the democratic or political or the republican government. The abilities of God are not hindered because people say there is no God. The abilities of God are unlimited to us who believe on him. Because the word says that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We just need to believe in a God who is able. We need to know that he is able in any situation, in any circumstance. And if you have any problems believing in his ability, just just, just roll back in your Bible. Just, just roll back in your record. And roll, roll back to the gospel according to Matthew. And you'll just read down through there or walk down through there. And you'll see the abilities of God that even showed up when he was born. How in the world if he wasn't able with wise men, rich men who were just going about their business got tra attracted by a star and followed that star to Bethlehem of Judea? How in the world would these wise men take from their treasure chest and lay it at a baby's feet? He's able. Yes. I just need somebody to know I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how bad it looks. Broke Busted and disgusted. God is able. Yes, yes, yes. He's able. He's able. Hurts, habits, and hangups can't hold him. He's able. Yes. He's able. He's able. Check his record. Check his record. Look at his first miracle. How in the world can a man go to a wedding and they run out of wine? Yeah, yeah. And his mother says, fill the water pots. Water mm -hmm. in the wine? A water in the water pots is going to become what he's able. Yeah. 
He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. I've seen people laying on their hospital bed and the doctor has walked away and said they don't have much time left. And some of those same people are walking around stronger than I am today because God is able. He has the last say. He has the only say that matters. I don't care what Trump said. I don't care what Obama said. I don't care what Nancy Pelosi said. I don't care what Adam Schiff said. God is able. I just wish he'd walk into the Senate and Congress sometime and slap them all, Sandy. <laughs> then the last thing I want to leave with you, that not only should you remember who he is, yeah. not only should you remember that he's able, but you need to remember what he's done. Mm. <laughs> Paul challenges the church at Corinth to remember the suffering sacrifice yeah. that Jesus made for the sins of the world. Isaiah 53 and 10 lets us know that it pleased God to bruise him. Yes. Yes. He put him to grief for our sins. Verse 9 in Isaiah 53 says that the grave was assigned to him with the wicked. So you need to remember. Oh, yeah. oh. You need to remember that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, gave his life for our sins. Okay, all right, all right. I want to convince you of that. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't know. You need to remember that it was Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who sat down one evening in, in, in an upper room with his disciples. And the word says that he, he took bread and he break it and he gave it to his disciples. Now check this out. Matthew and Mark don't say this do in remembrance of me. Luke says this do in remembrance of me. John don't even deal with it. But uh, Luke and Paul says, he said, do this in remembrance of me. So every time you get ready to partake of this bread and this cup, the blood and body of Jesus Christ, your mind ought to reflect back to Calvary. Even though I wasn't there, you heard, you heard the story. You heard the story of how early Friday morning after beating him all night long Thursday night and marching him from judgment hall to judgment hall back and forth and beating him and spitting on him and ridiculing him, placing a crown of thorns on his head that early Friday morning they put an old rugged cross on his back. You need to remember that that cross was not designed for him. That cross was designed for you and I. The song says, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all this world go free. But I'm glad the writer stopped and said, no. Yeah. So there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. Oh, remember, 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 remember when they put that cross on his back and started him walking for miles up toward a hill called Golgotha, a hill that was called Skull Hill. A hill had the stench of death on it, a hill that nobody that was hung on the cross ever came back alive from. Remember how they took him up there, how they laid him on the cross. They nailed his hands and his feet to the cross. Remember how they hung him high and stretched him wide. Jesus, what you gonna do now? Well, not gonna do anything. If I, and if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all me unto me. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, but that ain't the end of the story. He hung down from the sixth to the ninth hour. The word said in the ninth hour, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Everybody looked around to say, he's dead now. The soldier said, well, let's just check him to be on the safe side because the earth is trembling, it's reeling and rocking, and one of the soldiers eases over to spear him in the side, and as they speared him out of the side came blood and water, blood from my baptism, water from my baptism, blood for the redemption of my sin, but Jesus had already left him. Yeah. Oh, yes, he had. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. I feel more about this preacher coming back. I'm trying to stay away from it. I'm trying to stay away from it. But there hung Jesus on the cross. 
and they realized that he was already dead. Yeah. Yeah. So they began to take the cross down because Jesus had to be buried before the Sabbath yes. began. Yes. Somebody yes. ought to hear me up in here. They had to get him in the ground before the Sabbath began. Yeah. I, I hear I hear the Holy Spirit speaking in my head right now. Come here, Joseph of Arimathea. Jesus needs to borrow your grave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So y'all get over here. Yeah. Joseph of Arimathea says it's all right. Let him use it because I remember him saying he'll only need it for three days. Take him down from the cross, wrap his body, put him in the grave before the Sabbath begins. They roll a stone and place the stone over the door and seal it with the Roman seal. Yeah, yeah. Jesus laid in the grave peacefully all night Friday night. I don't know whether it was early in the morning or he went straight to hell, but, but the Bible has us to know that he went down to sales into the pits of hell to preach a revival because Abraham needed to see that which he had not seen. Isaac needed to see that which he had not seen. Moses and Aaron needed to see that which he has not seen. Zephaniah, Malachi, Zechariah needed to see that which he had not seen. Ruth and Boaz and all the rest of them needed to see who they had not seen. David, don't you want to sing a song right now? David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. But check this out. It don't stop right there. Come on. Preaching the revival in sales. Preaching the revival in the pits of hell. The alarm clock began to click toward the third day morning. I heard Jesus said, well, I got to leave y'all here, but I got to go back now. I got to give Joseph of Arimathea his grave back. I got to go back now because somebody in St. Louis needs me to get up from the grave. I got to go back now because the world needs to be redeemed by my blood. So I don't know about you, but the old Baptist preacher would say, early.
And there is someone who will answer the phone if you call. Give them just a couple seconds to get to the phone. And then we will take your information and we'll be in contact with you. Knowing that God loves you and he wants a relationship with you. And we would love to have you a part of our local church family. Amen. Let us commune together the broken body and the shedded blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us eat and drink together.